Hello and welcome to Edgecast, the series where we show you tips, tricks, and best practices when using Solid Edge. In this episode, I'll be showing what you can do with feature libraries, and how you can save out bits of your part models and use them another day on another project. Both synchronous and ordered modes are going to be demonstrated in this video, so if at any point you're curious as to what in the world I'm doing with the steering wheel, I'd advise pausing this and watching my steering wheel Edgecast episode first. To begin with, we'll cover basic copying and pasting of 3D features, which will set the scene for showing you feature libraries. I'll explain what they are, when you should use them, and the differences between synchronous and ordered feature library entries. I'll also show you how sketches can be reused between different part and sheet metal files. There is a way to share sketch features between draft documents, but that'll be the subject of another Edgecast episode. So, to start with, let's take a look at the very basics of feature reuse, for anyone who's not familiar with the concept. Remember Microsoft Word, or Excel, or PowerPoint, where you can copy and paste text, slides, or cells into a new location? Well, Solid Edge does exactly the same with features, like the one we see in this image. It's been copied from one plane to another. It's easier to copy something that already exists than to make it many times, and depending on what you're doing, copy-paste can save you a huge amount of time. To copy features, the general workflow is to select the features to be copied, many of them if needed, click Copy or press Ctrl C, paste into the new location, possibly with Ctrl V, either in the same part or in a completely different one if needed, position the feature, and then attach it to the model. If you're working in ordered mode, attaching takes place automatically. Of course, that's just theory. And CAD is always best explained with demo videos. Here's a tabletop I made earlier, with a slot in the top of it. As of Solid Edge 2019, you can make this with one feature, even if your sketch has sharp corners. The slot's ordered, but everything else is synchronous. And here's the first set of features I'll be copying, a dowel joint with two positioning holes. I don't really want to measure all this up and remake it, so let's go ahead and select all these features by clicking and dragging around them, and because we're in synchronous mode, we can use the steering wheel. Let's reposition it to the top of this hole right here, and repoint one of the directional arrows to the midpoint of this round. Now, I'll offset the steering wheel by 10mm, that's by shift-clicking on this arrow, if you remember, and switch on copy mode. Now, we'll click on this key point on the table edge, and now we have the same features copied to this location. This also works between part files. What do I mean by that? It means that if you have another part open, you can copy these features into it. You'll notice that this is another part with ordered and synchronous features, and because I copied a synchronous feature, you'll see I can't place it in ordered mode. Let's switch to synchronous then, and place these features on the base of the tabletop. I can use the steering wheel to position it roughly, but to line them up correctly, let's use the align holes face relationship. And once I've selected them all, this face here should do as an alignment plane. Because these were all copied from another part, they'll appear as detached faces. However, if we right-click and choose Attach, they become solid geometry and add or remove material from the part. In case you were wondering, copy and paste aren't just limited to synchronous features. This ordered slot needs to be replicated in the second tabletop, with the same recessed countable measurements and depth. So let's copy it across and see what happens. When I press paste, because this feature is ordered, I'll need to choose a new reference plane, which I didn't do in synchronous. The slot needs a sketch, and the sketch needs a plane, and the plane right here will do. Now if I want to set the sketch profile to treat a certain line around this face as its x-axis, I can do that by pressing N or B before I left click. If that's the result I wanted, I'd finish, but I have one more step to carry out, changing the slot sketch. I'd already drawn a sketch to drive the slot, in this uh, particular table, so let's edit definition for the feature, and rewrite history. Part history, that is. I'll go all the way back to the sketch step, deselect this profile, and choose a new one. Multi-slot is pretty useful in this scenario. And then I'll finish the feature. Now it's following a completely different path, but with the same countable measurements and depth. Now that's all well and good. But what happens if we can't open the files we want? Or if we want to store all of the commonly used features in one place, but in a structured way? 
or if you want to share a few features from a part you're working on with a colleague. All of this is possible if you use feature libraries, which store commonly used features for future use. If you think of assemblies as a collection of parts, then you can think of parts as a collection of features and faces, and your feature library can be used exactly like your parts library. The key difference is that features from this library are always copied with no link to their original part, so they don't depend on another part staying the same, or not being deleted. Feature libraries themselves are very simply Windows folders which store bits of parts. If you're using TeamCenter, then you'll be using TeamCenter folders instead, but the principle is exactly the same. The files created always share the file extension of the part they were created from, so a sheet metal feature has extension .psm, and a part feature has the extension .par. The library is located on the sidebar of each part and sheet metal environment, and you can create your own folders, subfolders, etc., with a new folder button right here. This is where you store features for future use, and drag in copies. You'll notice that I've created separate folders for synchronous and ordered features, and I'll explain why in a minute. As discussed, there's no link between the features you create from the feature library and these stored ones, so I advise not trying to edit them after they've been stored if you want to make everything change. It's not going to work. If you want to change an existing feature in this library, then I'd suggest overwriting it with a fresh feature copy. It's much easier. To add features from the library, you can drag them in, define a reference plane, and then edit the profile to position them. If you're using synchronous mode, the steering wheel is the best tool to use for feature positioning. If you're creating a feature library for the first time, though, there are two main ways to do this. Method one is to select features, copy them, right-click and paste them into a folder in the Feature Library tab. Method two is to select the required features and then click the green Add Entry button at the top of the Feature Library. Both methods will ask you for a file name, which has to be unique for the folder the feature's being placed into. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at this sheet metal bracket, which once again has a mix of synchronous and ordered features. I want to store two features from this model for use in the future. One of these mounting flanges, and the cutout that says no step. This flange and the cutout in it are both synchronous, so I'll transition back to synchronous mode to fence select them all. I'll position my steering wheel very carefully in the middle of this flange edge. This is useful for any feature library entry, but especially useful for sheet metal features, as we'll see. Now for the feature library itself which is very simply a Windows folder I created on my C drive earlier. This is a synchronous feature, and the best practice is to store it with other synchronous features. Now let's add these selected faces, giving it the name Mounting Flange, and I'll come back to that later. Now for the No Step cutout. Back to Order Mode to add it to the Feature Library, and this time I'll pin the tab out to make sure it doesn't disappear. Navigate to my Ordered Feature Library folder, and I think I'll save my work first, as it's been a few minutes. I'll select the cutout and Add Feature. This menu shows what steps will be needed to copy the feature into another part. In this case, it's just a plane. If I wanted to, I could add some comments in the column on the right, but I won't. I think No Step should be a logical name for this feature, and now we're finished. So later on, another day, another project, and let's say I'm a different user who needs to add a certain mounting flange and certain cutouts that say no step to their project. We also have a helpful colleague, otherwise known as me, who's told them of a shared folder containing exactly the features they need. This is the folder in question, and under the synchronous subfolder, we find a feature called mounting flange. Here's something to remember though. Synchronous flange features will only attach to models that share their unique thickness, so bear this in mind before adding them. You might want to include their gauge or material thickness in the feature name while saving. Also, please note that the preview window, which you might remember from assembly part libraries, does not work for synchronous features. They're detached face sets and aren't visible when they're not being placed in another part. Preview does work for the ordered library features though, which is why it's included here. As luck would have it, this part does have the same thickness as the mounting flange, so I'll drag and drop. Notice how the steering wheel stays in the same position I left it. 
I'll left click to place it in an empty space, and then use the steering wheel to move it precisely to the middle of this larger flange. After doing that, I'll reselect all of the detached faces, these are the ones with checkboxes against them, right click, and attach them to my model. Now they appear as solid geometry, no need to remodel them. That's much easier in the part environment, as you don't have to worry about matching thicknesses. You just copy and paste features. Speaking of which, it's also now possible to attach part features that don't fully intersect with solid geometry. This feature here has been very carelessly copied, but because the open surfaces can be extended to intersect with the rest of the part, they attach successfully. Same story with ordered features. Well, almost the same story. As you can see, it fails to place itself in the model, because we're in synchronous mode. But if I switch over to ordered, then try the same thing, I'll get my expected feature set information pane, telling me that a plane is needed to paste the feature onto. Just as before, we have a plane placement step, with the option to reorient with the N and B keys, and a repeat button if we want to place more of the same feature. The profiles for all of these features can be edited afterwards, and if you see any detached dimensions, it's possible to drag their handles to new edges, like this, and use them to drive the copy profile's position. You might have noticed a couple of hard rules that Solid Edge must follow when working with feature libraries, so I'll list them for you now. Rule 1. You can only place a synchronous feature library member if you're in synchronous mode. It won't work in a 100% ordered part. Rule 2. In similar fashion, ordered features can only be placed while in ordered mode. If you have a synchronous part, switch to ordered mode to place them. They can, however, be placed with synchronous faces as their reference planes. Because of these two rules, it's always best to store ordered and synchronous feature libraries separately, just to save confusion. Feature libraries are mostly used to store 3D features, and while working in ordered mode, that's all they can do. However, synchronous feature libraries can store other elements, such as sketches, reference planes, construction surfaces, and coordinate systems, this means that if you need to store sketches, but not their associated features, this is best done with synchronous feature libraries. If you want to store only sketch profiles with no associated features in ordered mode, that's a little more tricky. You can, of course, copy profiles between sketch environments with two parts open, but beyond that, you'll need to start using a draft file for storing ordered sketch profiles. This might seem a little limiting if you only use ordered mode, but remember, Solid Edge allows ordered features to be placed on sketches created in synchronous mode, and we can use that to our advantage. Here's a sketch I drew up in synchronous mode, which I want to save as a feature library entry. Let's pin this tab out here to make it easier, and let's do this properly. We'll put it into synchronous features folder, where it belongs. Now, if I select the sketch, then add it with the add entry button, it saves as a feature. Easy enough, right? Let's try the same in ordered mode, as I have an ordered sketch that is perpendicular to the synchronous one. Select and then add does absolutely nothing. That's because the sketch isn't a feature yet. To copy it, you'll need to edit its profile, select everything, and then copy. And before you ask, if uh, anyone wondering, no, you can't store this profile from an ordered sketch environment directly into feature library either. If you really, really want to store this profile for reuse in an ordered sketch, copy all of the elements you want, exit the sketch, create a new draft file, such as this, and then use paste to store the profile. If you want to use it in a new part, you can repeat the copy-paste operation. Personally, I'd keep all stored profiles in a synchronous feature library, and copy them into your models. Uh, remember to transition back to synchronous mode first, though, now I can bring in the profile stored earlier, and I'll lock it onto a reference plane with F3. I'll orient my view to the sketch plane for easier viewing, and left click to place. Once again, we have a detached dimension that was locked to the base coordinate system, so let's reattach it. The easy way to generate a solid model from this profile would be with a synchronous extrude, but just to prove my earlier point, I'll do it the hard way. I'll transition over to ordered mode, Begin an extrude, and start choosing sketch elements to include in this extrude. 
In my case, it's going to be all of them. And because this isn't an ordered sketch, I have to manually select them all. If you still want a complex order profile, instead of starting to use synchronous mode for your base features, I would advise using the tear off sketch command to send a copy of the profile to a new ordered sketch. If you want to know how this command works, I made an Edgecast episode on profile sketching, which is linked in the description of this video. Now we've finished selecting sketch lines, I'll create my extrude. By the way, this is not best practice. Best idea is to create many simple features, not one complex one. But I digress. We've now used a feature library sketch to create an ordered feature, even though a synchronous feature would have been easier in this case. So in summary, the moral of the story today is to never remake what you can just as easily copy. Most of the geometry you make in part or sheet metal files can be pasted into another location, or into a completely different file. Feature libraries are an extension of this ability, allowing many users to assemble parts from pre-built features, and saving time as a result. However, it's important to remember the rules of how ordered and synchronous features behave differently. They can't be added from your libraries unless you are in the correct modeling environment. That's why it's important to keep them separately stored. Finally, it's possible to reuse 2D sketch profiles between files, although this is somewhat easier with synchronous profiles, as only they can be used in feature libraries. Thanks very much for watching, and a special thank you to anyone who stopped by at the recent Digital University event in Silverstone. If you have any more questions, uh, topics you'd like to see covered in future videos, or any other feedback, please either leave a comment below, or send them to us by email at support at cuttingedge.co.uk. We're going to be changing company name and domain address soon, so if you're watching this video in the future, please check the video description for our updated contact details, and be sure to tune in to watch the next episode of Edgecast, in which we'll be doing a general comparison of synchronous and ordered modelling modes.